You don't know how happy I was to hear that these games would be coming to the Switch. I remember seeing the first game advertised back in the 2000s, only to be disappointed that it wouldn't be on the GameCube. But now at last, I'm finally able to play Star Wars Battlefront thanks to the Switch. It's the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection for the Nintendo Switch. These games retell the major battles from Star Wars films 1 through 6. Most of the time you're playing as the Droid Army, Galactic Clone Army, or the Imperial Forces, but sometimes you play as the Rebel Alliance too. The whole idea is to play through the epic battles of the pre-Disney Star Wars movies with the goal of conquering or liberating the galaxy. Don't expect there to be much story here, as like most LEGO games based on movies, Battlefront and Battlefront 2 assume you're familiar with the source material, so most of your time is spent in actual gameplay. Visually, both these games look very much like the Xbox versions from the 2000s, so you could definitely tell these are 6th gen games. The character models are blocky, but not as blocky as the N64, and the environmental textures are pretty standard for that time. But also the particle effects and lighting are very good to immerse you in the Star Wars universe, with colors being very fitting for games based on the movies. Mainly the Switch version keeps the frame rate consistent and upgrades the resolution to full HD, which by itself makes the games look better than they used to. I love the sound design of this game though. The use of music from the original and prequel trilogies make this a thrilling experience for Star Wars fans. I just wish it played more during multiplayer. It's a little inconsistent there. The sound effects are straight from the movies too, which is a great way to make you feel like you're in the movies. As for the voice acting, it's not bad, but you can really tell they didn't use the voices of the original film stars. Yes, I'd rather have impersonating voices than no voices at all in a game like this. It's just kind of funny how Mace Windu and Princess Leia are just so obviously not Samuel L. Jackson or Carrie Fisher. Oh, the voice acting of licensed games from the 2000s. The Battlefront games are shooters where you can play in first person or third person. In the case of the first game, you can switch between the two views just by pressing the left stick. Both styles have good controls for aiming, shooting, and other functions, with the second game being especially good for getting precise aiming. I generally prefer third person for seeing how my character moves without feeling disoriented, especially because your character can roll away from grenades. Your main objective is to wipe out the other team by getting to a certain kill count first or take over all control points. Of course for multiplayer, there is capture the flag, which I'm sure everyone knows how to play. There are different types of soldiers based on class. When you die in battle, you choose from a control point to spawn from, then a class of soldier to spawn with each with their own strengths and weaknesses, like the rocket launchers being very useful for destroying tanks when blaster rifle troops, snipers, engineers, and Wookiees just can't get the job done. That's part of the strategy when you're trying to take other control points while the other team is attacking in a way that may call for you to change things up. Each team can also get a Jedi or Sith hero who is very powerful, almost to the point of feeling unfair. But no one can deny how much fun it is to play as any of these warriors. To keep things balanced, this is granted as a reward for players who are doing well with kills and point captures. To make things really balanced though, Battlefront 2 offers a multiplayer mode called Hero Assault where everyone plays as a notable main character from the movies. Not just Jedi or Sith Lords you all know, but even Han Solo, Princess Leia, Boba Fett, and Jango Fett. But honestly, even with the jetpacks of the Fets, I still prefer playing with lightsabers and force powers. Most of the gameplay is spent playing on foot, but you also use vehicles from the movies in combat from both sides of the wars. I especially loved using the ground vehicles, which can actually hold multiple teammates at once, so someone can drive while others shoot. Plenty of space vehicles like X-Wings and TIE Fighters are also offered as well, with some levels in single player and multiplayer being made specifically for space battles. I had some issues controlling the ones in Battlefront 1, but they control just fine in Battlefront 2. But even in those space levels, you're encouraged to go on foot to infiltrate the enemy ship and sabotage their shields and turrets. It makes for great dynamic gameplay, what also makes for dynamic gameplay are the great level designs. They may not be the exact same design as the movies since they're designed for multiplayer combat, but they pull elements from the films that fans will recognize and appreciate. They do well to represent the movies with things like a Sarlacc pit on Tatooine that actually kills players who get too close to it. Hasta la vista, baby. So they do two great things at once put the fan in the movies, and make for plenty of opportunities for battles with different levels, ranges, and flanks like some of the best multiplayer shooters out there. I've been mentioning multiplayer a lot, so I would like to point out that there is a single player mode in both games. Before each level, the games play clips from the movies in place of in-game cutscenes, which for those of you too young to remember was actually pretty common for licensed games from the early 2000s. But single player is pretty much just multiplayer but with offline bots. Battlefront 2's single player at least has specific mission objectives, but with the level designs being similar to multiplayer, it's kind of like playing a mission-based multiplayer game in Time Splitter's Future Perfect. 
There are actually different campaigns for the prequel trilogy and original trilogy, but both campaigns feature planets across all six movies, with Battlefront 2 focusing more on the third prequel movie, Revenge of the Sith. But there is an additional mode in both games called Galactic Conquest where you play as the Rebels, the Empire, the Republic Clone Army, or the Separatists, and you're fighting to control a chain of planets away from your enemy. Each conquered planet gives your army a bonus you can then use in a later battle. So this is the mode with more focus on combat and strategy and barely any attention to story. Turning our focus to multiplayer though, one thing that made these games big deals back in the day was how many players could play together in the same online lobby. On the PS2, it was a maximum of 24 players, and the Xbox version supported 32 players in a lobby. Well, this Switch remaster sees your 32 player lobby Xbox, and raises you lobbies of up to 64 players at once, with any empty player slots being filled by online bots. It's awesome that a game like this can support such big lobbies, and with pretty rare moments of lag. Also, it's pretty easy to find a match or custom host one of your own for people to join. Thankfully, there's also two-player split-screen co-op, or you and a friend can play a competitive game of Galactic Conquest. I am pleasantly surprised that they bothered to include a way to play it with a friend offline on the same Switch. Split-screen tends to get left out of multiplayer games these days. This collection is yet another great addition to the library of Star Wars games on the Switch. While a four-player split-screen mode would have been nice, these are both otherwise great games for Star Wars fans, making this collection worth its $35 price. I just wish Aspire offered a cartridge version because this collection takes up 33 gigabytes of storage. That aside, I'm glad to finally have both of these games, the second one especially. Well, that's my review of Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection for the Nintendo Switch. Tell me to produce more videos like this, please support my Patreon page. Special thanks to my current patrons here. Remember that supporting my Patreon gives the name of the credits and access to my main videos a day early. Also be sure to watch my previous reviews of these other Star Wars games on the Switch. Star Wars The Force Unleashed, and Star Wars Republic Commando. See you all next time!